Welcome to AP Environmental Science. In this video we are going to talk about a few of the fuel types that are used for various energy consuming processes, whether it's electricity generation to transportation to cooking. All of those use some type of fuel specific to that particular activity. The fuel types that we are going to discuss in this video include wood and charcoal, peat, coal, oil, and natural gas. Now remember, coal, oil, and natural gas, those are all fossil fuels, and those would be considered non-renewable resources. The wood, charcoal, and peat that we're talking about, those are technically classified as renewable resources. However, in order to be truly renewable, they do need to be managed appropriately. So overuse of any renewable resource can turn it into a non-renewable resource if it's used faster than it is replenished. Starting here with wood and charcoal, this is primarily used in developing countries because it's pretty easily accessible. You just have to walk out into the forest and chop down a tree and now you have that wood to be used. So some of the uses include heating, lighting, and cooking. Um, charcoal is used very similarly to wood. Charcoal is actually partially burnt woody material, uh, so it's very similar. And some connections to other topics that we've talked about, including this removal of large areas of trees, can lead to soil destabilization and soil erosion. And of course that soil erosion means that nutrient-rich soil is being moved somewhere else. So that can lead to some food security issues. Deforestation also accounts for changes in the carbon cycle, and that means that you are going to have less carbon being sequestered or removed from the atmosphere in that particular location. The second type of fuel that we are talking about here is peat. Now peat is a partially decomposed organic material, and these are often found in peat bogs. Now that peat can be used very similar to wood. In fact, it's used primarily for heating and cooking. The third fuel is coal. Now coal comes in a variety of forms, and it all really started as peat. So it started as this partially decayed organic matter, and peat is not coal, they're totally separate. But if that peat is put under the correct conditions of pressure over a long period of time, it can turn into lignite. Now lignite would be this low grade coal, and that lignite could be continually under more heat and pressure and become bituminous coal. And that's a little bit better grade, has a little bit higher carbon and heat content, or that could go under even more pressure and become anthracite, which would be our hard coal. Anthracite is typically a little bit more desirable than lignite or bituminous coal. Now, depending on where you are in the world, you might have different varieties of this coal available. And keep in mind that not all coal is equal. Yes, it all started out as that peat. However, some forms of coal, as it burns, it's going to release more varieties of air pollutants than others. So in general, the uses of coal include electricity, heating, and cooking. And again, some of the connections that sulfur emissions from burning coal is associated with acid rain. So that sulfur that's emitted reacts with sunlight and water vapor, and that leads to the acid deposition or the acid rain, which leads to a whole bunch of other environmental issues. The next category of fuel would be natural gas. Now natural gas is much loved by the energy industry because it's considered a clean fossil fuel. But just because it's clean does not mean it is devoid of any issues. In fact, the only reason it's called clean is because when you compare natural gas to coal, it's not as bad. And it does release methane, and methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. In fact, natural gas is methane. So as you're burning it, there is some methane that's released. As you're mining or extracting the natural gas, some methane's released. 
and that leads to issues with our greenhouse gas layer. Now, how do we use natural gas? It is used in heating, cooking, electricity, and transportation uses. So you might use natural gas in your home for a water heater, or you might use natural gas on your stove to cook your food. Um, natural gas is also used in electricity generation at specialized power plants. So some connections again, natural gas is still going to produce carbon emissions. It's just not coming in the same form as the traditional coal and oil energy emissions. Crude oil is the next natural energy resource and crude oil can either be pumped out of the ground through a well or extracted from tar sands. Now tar sands is a type of soil that's made up of clay, sand, water, and bitumen. And this could either be extracted through removal of that soil and removing that whole substance or it could be extracted by using this in situ or in place extraction where steam is injected down into the ground and that really liquefies the oil in there and that oil is extracted up through a well. Now these two pictures at the top of the screen are representing that tar sands extraction and the open pit type and the in situ type of extraction. Now crude oil is used for many purposes, probably the most versatile of all of these fuel types. It is used for heating, cooking, transportation, and of course electricity. However, the processing to make this crude oil into a product that can actually be used is extremely resource intensive. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. First of all, I want to point out on these images on the bottom, that image in the bottom left, you see several oil wells. They look like hammers that are just rotating up and down to pump the oil up out of the ground. And these are often dotted across the landscape, and that's the big aerial picture in the center. So you can see a whole bunch of oil rig platforms throughout that particular landscape. Now again, crude oil can be made into many different fuels and each fuel is used for a specific purpose. So you have gasoline, which is also called petrol, that's used in most conventional automobiles. We also have diesel that's usually used in that larger heavy machinery. Again, there's jet fuel used for airplanes along with heating oil that some people use to keep their homes warm and to light lanterns and to cook. Now again, these products can all come from that same original crude oil, but they don't just magically happen. You have to use a very labor-intensive process. Now the process of separating out those individual fuels is called refining that crude oil. And the way it works is using this distillation unit. And what happens here is the crude oil is heated up in this furnace and based off of the temperature at which the substance boils off from the top, so it's boiled from the top, can collected in a condensation tube, and then allowed to cool and condense, that is how we separate out all of these different fuels. So you do need to know what a refinery is. You do not need to know the nitty gritty details of what fuel is collected from each temperature. Just understand the overall concept that we are heating up the fuel and based off of the different boiling points, we are collecting the different usable fuels from the original crude oil. Another important process that you need to know is called cogeneration. Cogeneration is a process of using one of those fuels for both heat and electricity. Now making electricity really is just about making heat to turn a turbine to spin a generator and that generator makes the electricity. Now if you're using this type of heat to turn that turbine, it makes sense that you could also capture the excess heat and use it to say heat a building. So if you're using that fuel for two different processes or two different uses, then you are calling that cogeneration. 
So co meaning working together and we're generating both heat and electricity. Several of these fuels are also used for cooking food. And throughout most of the world, people prefer to cook their food indoors. But the problem here is several of these fuels release a whole bunch of air pollutants. And if you're cooking indoors over these fuels, you're going to have a reduction in that indoor air quality. Now, the most common fuels that are used, particularly in the developing world, that lead to this reduced indoor air quality are things such as wood, charcoal, peat, and coal. Now again, it makes sense if we're having air quality issues, you're going to see most of the health impacts in terms of the respiratory system. So you'll see higher rates of asthma, you'll see higher rates of lung irritation, lung disease, bronchitis, and all sorts of other issues. Now in summary, you need to be able to describe each of the fuels and summarize some of their uses. You should be able to explain how refineries produce specific fuels from that crude oil. Give you a hint, it's based off of boiling points. You also need to be able to explain the process of cogeneration and be able to describe some of the health impacts of cooking over open flames indoors. Now again, I know this was a lot of information. Please send me your questions here. And I hope that as you watch this video, you were able to learn something.